It was very noisy outside the window. The fan was working, which was on the table. There were also empty bottles lying around while the young guy was sitting in front of the computer. He drank from the mug until he choked and coughed. He didn't need to drink cold water. Suddenly his phone rang and his mom called. The young man wiped his mouth with his hand and answered the call. The woman asked him if he would bring incense to the temple, and if he hasn't done it yet, he should immediately go and exalt, because it's not worth angering the gods. The guy rolled his eyes, already purple with fatigue, while listening to moralizing from his mother. He lazily stretched out that he would definitely come down today. Then he pressed the reset button and assured the call. The brunette realized that there was no other way out, and went outside, starting his moped. He decided to do as he was told in order to get rid of this case as quickly as possible and be free again. This young guy's name is Zhang Feng, and if he could sum up the first third of his life with just one single sentence, he would use the phrase he has seen failures, but he has never seen them in such numbers. When he was still a baby, he almost drowned in the bathtub because of the negligence of the nurse who looked after him. Later, at the age of five, he climbed to the top of the money tree to pick a couple of twigs, but the branch on which he was sitting suddenly broke and almost killed him. But at the age of eight, he fell into a ditch, where he broke two bones while driving to school. And there were too many such similar cases, and the guy even began to think about whether he had done evil in his past life. Arriving at the temple, Zhang Feng decided to put the incense sticks in the right place in the hope that the Bodhisattva would see it. While he was looking at the high staircase in front of the temple, the weather turned very bad. A terribly strong and cold wind rose, tearing the leaves from the trees. Black menacing clouds appeared. After a while, he still climbed up, puffing from fatigue. Now it remains only to buy these sticks and you can go to the temple. But then the guy suddenly realized that he couldn't find his wallet. Was it stolen? Passers-by looked at him suspiciously while Zhang Feng was angry that some dishonest scoundrel dared to steal his wallet right in front of the temple entrance. A man in a bright yellow robe and with a pancake gray beard asked him not to worry too much and handed the guy candles, blessings, just like that. He may not worry about money so much. The young man is moved by such a kind gesture. It seems that this is the only happy moment in his life. Suddenly, loud lightning broke out while the guy sincerely thanked the master for such a generous gift. In the next second, torrential rain poured down, and Zhang Feng could not believe that the failures continued to haunt him. After all, he only received blessings. Then he suddenly got angry and said that even if lightning cracked him, he would still put these blessings in the right place. Lifting his head up and ignoring the rain that whipped his cheeks and clothes, the guy told his dear ancestors that he was an ordinary Zhang Feng guy and he had been just a loser all his life, so he asked them to have mercy on him at least once. A moment later, lightning struck him and he seemed to light up all over. Lightning hit right in the eye and the guy screamed. A little later, Zhang Feng barely opened his eyes and realized that he was lying on the ground. Before his eyes, he saw the master who was trying to bring him to himself. The guy suddenly saw a strange circle and numbers above the master's head, and began to list them out loud, 64, 1, 2. Meanwhile, the master was surprised that the guy could guess his age. Does he look so old? After all, everyone usually tells him that he looks quite young. Zhang Feng asked in amazement, isn't he really 64 years old? And the old man sadly replied that time, unfortunately, does not spare anyone. The guy got very nervous and realized that the circles above his head show the number 64, so it shows age. Did his right eye get supernatural powers, like in some comic books? But first Zhang Feng decided to make sure of this for sure and looked at the statue of the Holy Trinity, which also had circles above its head. He suddenly asked the master if he knew the age of this statue of the Holy Trinity. The old man told him that according to his teacher's stories, he thinks that now this statue is about 370 years old. Thanking the master, the guy replied that he had to go, and he ran down the stairs, heels flashing. He was inspired by the fact that today he finally has the opportunity to change his fate. The old man just remained looking after him and sighed heavily, saying that he would never understand these young people. And what are they thinking about? Some time later, Shang Feng arrived on his moped at the market, where there were a lot of people. There was no thunderstorm and the bright sun was shining, the rays of which filtered through the clouds. Passing by the crowd, he heard shouts here and there that he should look at different goods, either a jade statuette for only 800 yuan, or genuine Song Dynasty porcelain. The sellers even began to swear among themselves. They even said something about jade, a green mineral that looks very similar to jade, but it is less common than jade and is valued much higher. Looking at the goods, Zhang Feng also saw circles there, which he did not expect at all. A man with brains called him a brother and asked what he was interested in. He has only genuine and very high quality goods, so he can choose what he wants to need. Poking at a strange object behind the seller's back, the guy asked how much it costs. The man immediately helped and asked if he really wanted to buy this ink stone. And then he began to tell me that this is a very ancient and ancient heirloom, and therefore it is very expensive. 
However, the brunette was not impressed and he asked if he really wanted to rip him off. His father was an entrepreneur, but even he had never seen such arrogance. Then the guy exhaled and said to this guy, Then this piece of asphalt is worth nothing. However, the man did not agree. And why did this boy think it was a piece of asphalt? Zhang Feng replied that he didn't care at all. He just needed a stone for calligraphy and asked for a normal price. It's better for him to sell it and not keep this garbage and spoil his reputation. The man did not think for long, but then he agreed, since he was asking so much. And then the man decided to give it at cost for 300 yuan. Hearing such a price, the guy almost exploded. Yes, it was just a robbery. Turning to the exit, Zhang Feng said his proposal. Either the man gives him for 50 or he leaves here. The man said he was offering the last price, 100 yuan. The guy should know the measure. But Zhang Feng just waved his hand and replied that he was leaving. Then, puffing with anger, the seller told him that he could take it for 50. What an asshole. Zhang Feng smiled and said that this was the way to talk from the very beginning. After the boy left, the man shed bitter tears of resentment that everything had turned out this way. The man in the cap told him to stop whining because the guy had already left. He really had this boulder for several months and by the way, he got it for free. And then he asked how much the guy paid him. It turned out that the seller was smiling and said that everything was fine with him because he also remained in the black. At this time, Zhang Feng came to another place while shouting if there was anyone inside. Then he saw a girl with white hair standing with her back to him. When the guy said that he had something, the girl turned to him sharply and from embarrassment and charm, Zhang Feng even dropped the stone from his clumsy hands. Then he came to his senses, pulled himself together and caught the stone before it would have crashed to the floor. He exhaled with relief that he had managed, then stood up again to his full height and greeted the beauty. The blonde asked if he would like to sell something, and when Zhang Feng replied that yes, he would like to, the girl called him to follow her. After a few minutes of walking through the corridors, the girl knocked on the door and entered the office where a man in glasses was sitting. It was her uncle Chen and she informed him that the seller had come. The man asked the guy to let him look at the goods, and if this thing is really real, then he will not offend at the price. Zhang Feng handed him a stone and told him to look carefully. Meanwhile, the man adjusted his glasses and began to look closely at the stone, which did not seem to him something special. At this time, Zhang Feng himself was staring at a girl who was damn cute. He was so deep in his thoughts that he didn't even notice that he was called several times. When he came to his senses, he roused himself, and the man apologized to him because it was possible that his eyesight was failing him, but the thing he brought was worthless. Then the man asked him to ask someone else. The brunette said thank you and thought about it. If you believe old man Chen, then he bought a cheap one. I need to check this thing with my right eye. Could it be? Zhang Feng then asked Uncle Chen if there were any processing tools in his workshop. And after a few minutes, he had already stolen this very stone, while Uncle Chen and the girl were watching him from behind his back. The blonde noticed that, apparently, this thing is made of Chan Huang stone. According to historical records, this stone was a symbol of the Qing dynasty. During the Qing dynasty, the governor of Fujian province carved the Three Chains medallion from the finest Tian Huang, which was valued by Emperor Qian Long and passed down from generation to generation. On his deathbed, Emperor Xianfeng presented Kixi with the imperial seal of Tian Huang. The last emperor of Pui did not want to take all the treasures, but only sewed the medallion into his cotton suit. In a nutshell, this very stone is valuable, and even more valuable than gold itself. Looking at the blonde with her mouth open, Zhang Feng realized that this girl is so professional, and she is also so beautiful. And what does it turn out to be? According to her, is he very rich now? Meanwhile, the girl told Uncle Chen that her grandfather had always dreamed of Tian Huang, so she would give it to him. And when the man agreed, she turned to the guy and asked if 800,000 yuan would suit him for this stone. Zhang Feng was stunned by the price. He didn't think that this thing would be worth as much as 800 grand. And he also bought it for 50 yuan. Looking at his hesitation, the girl thought that it was probably too little for him. So she offered him a million. Is that what it turns out? Almost a million? The guy was lost in his thoughts again. Flashing his red cheeks, Zhang Feng turned to her and said that he agreed to her proposal. And later, on the street, he could not get enough of the fact that he received a whole million. And who would really have thought that he, Zhang Feng, could become a millionaire in just one day? Then the guy looked at the piece of paper in his hands and remembered that Bai Fuzu, that's the name of that blonde, gave him her phone number if he suddenly had any more, the wishes. He can contact her directly at any convenient time. How lucky the guy was, for the first time a beautiful girl herself gave him her number. Zhang Feng said that since she was pretty smart, why didn't she tell everything herself? And then Bai Fuzu agreed and invited him to walk around the Jade Quarter. When they were already walking along a crowded street, she said that the advantages of Jade are exquisite texture, rich color, shine and radiance. In the whole world, only three countries can boast that they produce Jade. There's Mexico and New Zealand, which was very cool. 
There are many ways to determine antique jade, such as the method of drops, the method of fire, the method of tongue, the method of transfusion of color. Suddenly, some strange man got in their way, who said that he had been working in this business for 20 years, but did not know a part of what this lady knew, and gave her the thumbs up. Ai Fu and Zhang Feng froze for a second and then the guy suddenly became embarrassed and told the man that he had misunderstood everything, because they were not a couple at all. Then the man said that it needed to be fixed, because they looked just like a real couple. He sees that they are both interested in Jade, so why don't they buy something for themselves? A new batch came to him only yesterday, so they can spoil her everything. Entering the shop, Zhang Feng asked Bai Fuzu what she thought about the bracelets. The girl looked at them and replied that they were pretty cute, and then the seller got them something else. He told the guy that he sees that his girlfriend is a real expert, so he won't put a price on them, and so he will sell them these two bracelets for only 4,000 yuan. After a while, they were already standing on the street and the brunette was holding a box with these bracelets in his hands. He thanked her for telling him about all this and as a token of gratitude he would give her all these bracelets. The girl was embarrassed, but still accepted these gifts. But Zhang Feng suddenly awkwardly scratched his head and said that he remembered his important business. So it was time for him to go. He didn't know how else to get out of it. But then his gaze fell on a shop window and suddenly it went dark in his eyes and he clutched his head, swaying a little. Bai Fu Chu immediately ran up to him to hold him. The young man did not understand what was happening to him. Gradually his vision began to blur, and people were already crowding around. In the end, from the fact that he was very dizzy, he just fell on the blonde, losing consciousness. The girl kept calling him, didn't understand what happened to him and why he suddenly fell so suddenly, and Zhang Feng just mumbled to the floor of his eye, which apparently hurt very much. Zhang Feng woke up from the fact that it was surprisingly soft for him to lie down. It turned out that he was lying on the chest of Bai Fuzu, who was glad that he woke up as soon as he opened his eyes. She asked how he and the guy apologized for such an awkward situation. The guy promised to get up immediately, but the girl asked him not to hurry and pressed his head back. He should go to the hospital just in case, because nosebleeds are not a joke at all. And she almost strangled him. After looking at the condition of the poor young man, the girl offered to accompany him, but he refused and said that he would be able to walk himself. In his entire life, no girl has ever worried about him so much, so it's hard for him to even believe in such a thing. And when the young man was leaving, the blonde asked him to be careful. A little later, the guy was sitting in the doctor's office, who was checking the reaction of his pupils to light. The doctor said that nothing serious had happened to his eye. He just had a little conjunctivitis and he didn't need to worry because she would write him a prescription for anti-inflammatory drugs. Already out in the corridor, Zhang Feng thought that all this was very strange. Is it really just an inflammation of the mucous membrane? Then why did all this hurt him just now? It's probably not that simple. Could it be that the strength of his right eye has increased? Zhang was passing by an open ward and heard a conversation there, stopped for a second. Someone asked to take him home. The guy looked in there and saw Ziora. It seems during his college years, he met this girl, a brunette, who asked him to join the club and handed him a leaflet. She introduced herself to Liu Ziora. Soon after, they saw each other often, the young man watched her all the time, and now he saw her here in the ward, while she was talking to her mom. I asked about her well-being and if there were any improvements. The woman told her that she was already a little better and not so painful. Then the woman asked her to listen carefully and asked to go home. But the girl told her not to worry about anything. And about money too, because she would settle everything. She shouldn't worry. But the woman was persistent. What was wrong with saving 600,000 yuan? After all, their family is not as rich as before. And she herself is already quite old, so it's not worth it. Zhang Feng sadly realized that they did not have enough money to stay in this hospital. 600,000 is really a very large amount. Who would have thought that such a thing would happen in blue? Immediately, the guy heard the click of heels on the tile. A spectacular red-haired girl was walking down the corridor. But apart from anger, she did not cause anything in the brunette. And what is she doing here? After making sure that she couldn't see him, Zhang Feng quietly took a picture of her on his phone while she complained that the room smelled very bad. How small the world was after all. This girl's name is Zhu Wai and it's not that he wants to remember her name. He spent all his money on her when he was still a boy, just to get her favor. He remembered how she constantly asked him for something, and he just couldn't refuse. After three months of their relationship, she showed herself in all her glory and left him, and later, from classmates, Zhang Feng learned that she had found herself a rich man. She was outraged that he dared to buy a ring with such a small stone, even though it was her birthday. She called him a beggar and immediately abandoned him. Then I knocked on doors to talk. Passers-by were whispering behind her back because they broke up. It is very painful for Zhang Feng to remember this past. This girl told her friends that he had left her and asked them to avoid guys like him. 
They are all losers and beggars. The girl did not stop spreading rumors that he allegedly used her, portraying her as a complete garbage in the eyes of other girls. I wonder what she needed in this place. Why did she come? Zhu Wai turned to Zyoru and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. She looked so tired that people would believe her if she said she was 30 years old. After all, she has to work hard and take care of her mother at the same time. It must be very exhausting. Zhang Feng realized that this girl was as evil as she had been before. Nothing has changed. Meanwhile, the redhead asked her something about the sale and Zyoru asked if it was still possible to raise the price. Zhang Feng wondered what she was selling. Then Zhu Wai replied to the girl that her old house was worth a maximum of 170,000 yuan. The new one is about 300,000, so she still has to say thank you that she buys it for 150,000 at all. Zhang understood one thing from this conversation, Zhu Wai is obscuring something. She's definitely up to something. Her house can't be worth less than 280,000. And then he decided to come around the corner and then make fun of the ex-girlfriend. Allegedly she has a good business going on here. She doesn't really want to buy a house for 150,000, but to sell it for 300,000. How profitable it is for her, it turns out. The girl got angry and replied that she was not doing charity work here. And who is he anyway? After all, the brunette is ready to sell, and she is ready to buy, so what else does he need and what does it matter to him anyway? Meanwhile, Xiaoer recognized Zhang Feng and tried to shield him from this scandal, but the guy did not even look in her direction and yelled at Zhu Wai. After all, she is a person and not the last creature. We must act according to our conscience. And when she sees that her classmates are in trouble, she not only does not help them, but also adds fuel to the fire. Doesn't she have no conscience at all? She's still exactly the same as she was in college. While the guy was splashing all this on her, he came closer and closer to her, and then Zhu Wai told him not to approach her, because he stinks. Is 150,000 really not enough for him? The young man also decided to scold Zyora herself, calling her a complete fool, because if she decides to sell her house, where will she and her mother live then? Where will she live when her mother recovers? The girl tried to answer something, but Zhang Feng continued. If she sells her house, it will still not be enough to pay for the operation for her mother. So where was she going to get the rest of the money? Would she have anything else left to sell? Zhu Wai intervened. She asked, why wouldn't he pay for this girl then? Nigella himself has it in his pocket, but he stands up for her so much. And why was he staring at her like that? Maybe he wants to hit. Let him just try to touch her, this loser. Zhang was a little angry while Zyor tried to calm him down a little. She asked him to step aside to talk about everything in private. Then Zhu Wai adjusted her sunglasses on her head and told her to let her know if she still decided to sell her house to her. The redhead suddenly remembered that back in college she wanted one back, but the guy didn't have money for it. But now, he has so much money that he can pay such a large sum for a stranger. He's a real brat. Jang finally got angry and shouted at her to shut up. Then he took a wad of money out of his pocket and threw it in her face so hard that all the bills scattered all over the room. Zhu Wai couldn't figure out where he got so much money from. He then turned to Zyoru and said that it was only a few hundred thousand. He would pay for her mother's surgery so she wouldn't have to sell her house. Zhu Wai was beside herself with indignation and rage. How do you even understand this? The brunette pretended to be a fool and asked what she was talking about. The guy shoved the redhead a bundle of travel money that she wanted so much and told her to get out of here. She, in turn, replied that he would remember her again. Who does he even take her for? She doesn't need his money. One is poor, standing here, and the other is pretending to be rich at all. And where did she get to anyway? Looking after the departing one, Zyoru asked if they had gone too far. Jiang Feng told her not to be afraid of this girl. Then he gave her money in a card, with a top up on the back. This money should be enough for her mother's treatment. And she certainly cannot worry about anything. But just stay with her mom all this time, he will take care of all the expenses. From such generosity, the girl only burst into tears. She didn't know what to say to her, and how to thank the guy. But so far she limited herself to the word thank you. The young man became kinder and asked her not to cry, because first you need to ask the doctor about the operation. He has things to do, so he will leave them so they can spend time together. The girl just nodded in response and went to her mother in the ward. It was very clear and good weather outside. The sun shone brightly, a bright rainbow shone on the vineyard. Zhang Feng was walking around the market thinking that he needed to earn some money, because he emotionally gave everything he had to Xiaor, without even thinking about himself. Otherwise, he would still have to return to his old job. Examining the goods on the counter, he realized that they were worthless. But then I suddenly stopped because I saw something very interesting. Turning to the man behind the counter, he asked how much this thing costs. He replied that it was a very good choice, because he risked his life to get this thing. This thing belonged to King Yu Guzhong. The man then leaned into Zhang Fang's ear and whispered to him that for 400,000 yuan, he would give her to him. 
However, Zhang Feng was extremely dissatisfied with this price. 400,000 is too much and offered to take it for 300,000. Gritting his teeth, the man agreed to give him such a big discount and slapped the table. When Zhang Feng went about his business, another man came up to the seller and said that he was doing a good job because he had bred that burdock because the thing that he bought, the red price was only 200,000. What a treasure. 30 minutes later, Zhang Feng went to some place and asked one girl how they were doing and how they could please him. The girl replied that everything was fine and Chen Lao was satisfied, and then she handed him an envelope with money. And the men watching could not believe that the guy had just been given a whole million. Zhang was quite pleased. He did not expect to find a treasure, just rummaging through this garbage, you need to come here more often. Guys were running from somewhere to the side and almost knocked the brunette down. The envelope fell out of his hands, but they kept running. It was all very strange and not clear. And so, Zhang Feng decided to go and sort things out. At some island, the seller argued with a woman that he would give her the goods only for 300,000 and this is his last price. But the old lady also turned out to be not timid, so she insisted that the price was 50,000 and no more. If he doesn't buy, someone else will. Zhang stood in the crowd and tried to see what they were talking about. Is it really about the painting? Then he told the guy to get off the poor old lady, because she told the four of them everything. It seems to be nothing like that, but it costs a lot. Then he asked the woman if she would let him look at this painting too. When he took the canvas and unfolded it, he saw an interesting picture and more circles. He realized something in his head, and then said that he would take this painting for 50,000. As a result, he and the old lady parted like ships at sea, after she asked if he wanted to count his money. She told the guy that she needed money for the treatment of his old man, so there was no other choice but to sell the painting. The young man advised her to be careful on the way, because after all, the amount is not small. The old lady thanked him, and the guy offered to call her a taxi. He had been unlucky all his life, but he never thought that so many people would thank him if he changed his luck. Well, now it's time for him to look at the product he bought. After a while, Zhang Feng came to the market again. The crowd laughed at the guy for giving 50,000 for some garbage. They also have a lot of pictures, so does he want to buy them? Passing by the bench where the man was sitting, he was suddenly called. It was the same salesman who told the guy to listen to his advice, because he is a pro in this business. That roll of shit he's holding in his hands isn't worth 500 yuan. Zhang Feng then turned to him and asked what about arguing? Make a bet. If this painting is worth anything, then he will return the guy's money. But if it really doesn't cost anything, then the guy will give him 700,000 yuan. The man stood up and said he had nothing to be afraid of, so he totally agreed. In the end, they went to Uncle Chen, who studied everything in detail with his magnifying glass. Zhang Feng stood nearby, dissatisfied, and whispered to the blonde that the seller owed him 300,000. After a while, my uncle delivered his verdict. He doesn't know what the guy found in this picture, because it's an ordinary landscape. It even looks sloppy and is written without a soul at all. This ordinary painting costs no more than 200,000 yuan. Seeing that Zhang started crying, the girl tried to calm him down, but the seller was rejoicing at this time. He demanded 700,000 from the guy, as they agreed. Zhang Feng gathered his courage and with disdain in his voice told this macaque not to worry, because he would give him his money. But first he needed to look at this picture again. The man was not happy with the way the guy called him. He should just accept it, because he lost money. That's all. But Zhang Feng didn't want to give up so easily. He just didn't believe it. Opening the painting again, he began scanning it with his super eye. He could still see two auras there. Maybe, the man did not let him do anything else, grabbed his hand and asked if he really wanted to get out of the dispute. The brat should return his money immediately. But the young man was dissatisfied with this behavior and demanded that the man let him go, because he had not finished yet. Bai Fuzu intervened in the matter, who tried to somehow separate them. The guy wanted her to mind her own business. Zhang was told that it was cheap, so why is he trying to deceive everyone here? The young man pushed the girl away again so that she would not get in the way. Then a complete mess began, as a result of which the picture was completely torn up. But it turned out that it was a picture within a picture, because a smaller white bundle fell out. At this time, Zhang Feng got his head hurt and began to apologize to the girl for what he did not mean at all, while Uncle Chen was trying to consider a new fine. And after a few seconds, he realized that he was holding an incredibly valuable and rare thing in his hands. No one expected that they would be able to find a painting within a painting. Bai Fuzu decided to take the situation into her own hands. As you know from the name, there is another painting hidden inside the painting. They are very careless on the outside, but inside they are often a work of the highest class. They are very very valuable. Zhang Feng was glad to hear this and immediately asked how much such a treasure could be worth. But the girl did not immediately answer him, but only winked and said that he should ask her politely, and then maybe she would tell him everything. Uncle Chen asked if the price of 5 million would suit him. And Zhang Feng immediately presented himself as the richest man. 
and of course he agreed. After taking the envelope, Estan turned to the man with whom he had argued and reminded him not to forget to return his money to him. He just cried that this simply could not be. He was so close to winning. The guy seemed to be mocking him at this time, saying that he didn't even know where to spend all this money. And then he suddenly came up with a brilliant idea. He went to a big city where there were glass skyscrapers all around and went to a real estate agency. A nice girl greeted the guy and asked if he wanted to buy a house. He can get acquainted with their houses in the brochure that the girl handed him. Then the girl suddenly looked up at him and was indignant that beggars dared to come to their agency. What's going on with these strange people? They are located in the most prestigious area of the city. The cheapest houses cost 4 minus 5 million and to buy them you need to pay the entire amount immediately. The guy thought that it was too expensive and he would again be completely out of money in this case. In the end, Zhang Feng replied that he would think about it and left, awkwardly anointing this kind girl goodbye. However, the brunette told him not to make people laugh. To whom is he only trying to prove something and deceive? Khan even looks like a beggar, not to mention buying a house. She's just wasting her precious time on him. Zhang Feng stopped and asked again for his confidence. The girl was already painting her red plump lips in full and told him not to waste her time. Then Zhang Feng asked what would happen if he still had money. The employee at the next table was sleeping at all, drooling at the workplace and not reacting to this whole situation. An angry Zhang Feng threw his card on the table and announced that he was going to buy a house. How dare she say such nasty things about him, without even knowing if he has money. Clothes don't solve anything. The girl who was sleeping on the table abruptly got up from a loud knock on the table and the brunette explained to Sai Lai that the young man wanted to buy a house and she should tell him how much money he had left. After a couple of moments, the guy in a relaxing pose asked the girl how much money was on his card. The balance was 6,753,600.00 and she was just in shock. Then the girl quickly pulled herself together and informed Zhang Feng that there had been some misunderstanding. She leaned on him, and so the guy asked her to stay away from him as much as possible. Doesn't she really want to take back her words? The girl bowed low to the gentleman and apologized to him. Zhang Feng began to pretend to be an offended child. Well, she said he was a beggar, poor, and unable to buy a house here, so he didn't need any honors from her. In addition, he does not want to transform housing in a place where no one respects people. What are they only ready for in order for him to buy this apartment from them? The girl stammered that she could do anything his heart desires, and then Zhang Feng said that he was leaving after all, and would not waste her time as she had wanted before. The girl had nothing left but to wish him a good day. The brunette winked at her and said that maybe in the future, he would look at them again. But now he definitely lost the mood to buy. Going outside, the guy realized with annoyance that she had only spoiled his mood with her antics. Suddenly, someone asked him to stop. It was a blue-haired girl who asked him if he happened to be in the sales department just now. Zhang Feng asked her what was the matter, and she introduced herself to them and replied that she was not selling apartments, but she was a rental consultant. Holding out a piece of paper, she asked the guy to look at it. There was presented an apartment that they rent out. Meanwhile, Zhang Feng himself was embarrassed again and seems to have fallen in love. He thought that Bai Fuzu would never meet anyone more beautiful in this world, but this girl is definitely very beautiful. The guy was thinking so hard that he didn't hear her call him several times. After quickly examining the ad, the young man said that this apartment looks pretty nice and asked the girl to show it to him. And then Ami gladly agreed to such a request. After all, this is her job. After a while, they were already standing in front of the house in which the apartment was located. This house from the outside impressed the guy very much. It's hard to imagine what you can see inside. Here they began to tell what and how. The house was equipped with all household appliances. In addition, there is even a small cinema and a dining room. Zhu Wai suddenly appeared behind them, who immediately recognized the guy and called him an upstart who did not understand what he had forgotten here. First he pretended to be nice and paid for Zioru's mother's surgery. And now he decided to pick up this girl. Zhang Feng realized with a sigh that she must be following him, since they constantly meet in the most unexpected places. However, Imi turned to Mr. Lai, the guy standing behind Zhu Wai, and asked if he had decided to buy an apartment after all. Taking off her cool glasses, Zhu Wai asked what she cared if they bought a house here or not. This attitude towards the girl was simply outrageous. The blue-haired woman put her hands on her hips, and Zhang Feng angrily asked her for a contract because he suddenly wanted to rent an apartment here. Zhu said with a haughty look that this was the first time she had heard that such houses were rented out here. Maybe he just decided to deceive the poor girl. Hugging her new blonde boyfriend, Zhu advised him to return to his factory, and they would buy a house. However, her boyfriend was still silent, and she didn't understand why at all. However, the blonde could not stand it, pulled his hand out of her grip and stubbornly declared that he was not going to buy a house here, who even told her that he was going to buy anything. Personally, he doesn't say anything like that to her. 
Then the guy got into his red car and drove away, leaving the redhead standing on the side of the road. She kept shouting where he was going, but it was too late and only the clang of wheels on asphalt was heard. Zhang Feng laughed and concluded that this guy was interested, and then he asked me for a contract to sign. Of course, Zhu Wai was very angry. She was not used to losing like that and was beside herself with rage. So she promised the guy that she would definitely take revenge on him. Do not forget to stamp loudly with your black heel. Zhang Feng only laughed at these threats. Before threatening, she would have at least looked at herself first, because her skirt had come off. When the girl left, he decided that while there was an opportunity, he could spy on her. But this was not appreciated by them and told him not to pay attention to all this. They had better sign the purchase document. After a while, they had already inspected the house with a chic interior, and therefore Zhang Feng put his signature on the piece of paper. And he left a copy of the contract to the young man and suddenly said that she had a few more free gifts for him. The guy made the most bored look, throwing his legs on the table, and asked what was prepared for him there from the bay. Then he suddenly approached her, hinting at something. But the girl considered it just an abomination and slapped him so hard that his nose bled. Then, as if nothing had happened, she said that the gift was in their office and they needed to go there with her to pick it up. Zhang Feng had no choice but to roll his eyes and agree. Going out on the street, it was clear that it was not at all surprising that with so many vacant houses there was a business of renting them out. When they both came back to the office, the same girl who thought he was poor treated the other visitor in the same way. She said the same phrases, saying that her time was being wasted. The girl, with gorgeous ash-colored hair, a spectacular blonde, was extremely outraged by this person's behavior towards her client. Zhang Feng was angry that this rude girl was at it again. Well, how does she know that the girl has no money? While another client was being insulted, Zhang Feng couldn't stand it and yelled at an employee who didn't want to shut up. He shouted at her to immediately stop talking to customers like that and she immediately settled down. Stammering, she asked why he was still here. Meanwhile, the blonde pretended to be his girlfriend, rushed to Zhang Feng's neck and began to cry that she was being treated badly here. The brunette groans that she will crush him now if she does not get off him, and besides, how can she call him dear? There was a real commotion in the hall. The girl was still sitting on Zhang Feng while a bunch of people were already crowding around and looking at all this mess. It seemed that the blonde knows no boundaries and even called the guy her hubby, repeating that she was being offended. Zhang Feng didn't know what to do. He stuck to her face, pondering what he should do in such a strange situation. And yet, he decided that he would not help her and asked if they knew each other. Hi, it's not the first time he sees. The girl hugged him tightly around the neck and whispered, Did little Feng graduate from university and completely forgot about her? The guy did not expect this and tried to figure out what was going on. Then he remembered that this nickname was given to him by the class president in college. She was one of the most beautiful girls and her name is Y. Oyan. During the annual sports competitions, he was chosen by the whole class as one of the participants. And then he hurt his leg. It was the president who accompanied him to the hospital and helped him. The young man remembered lying in a hospital bed while his classmate was on the phone with his aunt and tried to assure her that everything was fine. Meanwhile, the guy himself was lying with a cast on his leg. He was about to get up, but the blonde grabbed his hand and asked him not to move. He would only make it worse for himself. He has suffered so much, he needs to rest as much as possible. This girl followed him literally everywhere. Even when he was in the shower, she sprawled on his bed, and he was ready to go to her, but nothing happened and his leg broke again. And Y. Oyan took care of them again, literally fed them with a spoon. That's how he remembered everything that had happened. And now, having pulled her away from him a little, he could not believe that it was really her, and even seemed a little happy from this meeting. The blonde was also glad that he finally remembered her. He's a real asshole, how could he forget his wife? The guy laughed and said that they urgently need to stop this performance, because everyone is looking at them. The girl hugged his head and asked what he was afraid of. He's her baby fang, so what's wrong with her being a little naughty with him? Then she abruptly turned her head towards the people and menacingly asked if they had any problems. Because why were they looking at them like that? That same employee didn't want to have anything to do with it and deal with them. Therefore, I bowed to these two and apologized. Y. Oyan only snorted in response. A little later they were walking down the street and Y. Oyan suddenly said that she had heard that he had rented a villa and she really wanted to see it. The house was simply gorgeous both inside and out. There was even a private pool, an incredibly huge villa that she would gladly share with him. She was overjoyed by the fact that there was a swimming pool, but they ended up walking down the street later. Zhang Feng still didn't like this place where there wasn't a single car, and there are not even pedestrians. It was as if he had bought a house in a cemetery. Why don't they walk? I still want to eat. A red car flashed by, and then it stopped and the driver rolled down the window. There was a man there and asked who it was. Is this Mr. Zhang, who just recently rented a villa? Does the guy need help with anything and does he have everything in order with the house? The girl asked Zhang Feng if they were familiar with this man. 
and he replied that he was seeing him for the first time. Then the man handed him his business card, saying he forgot to introduce himself. It said that he was the real estate sales manager of Hangzai. The man remembered him when he saw him in the office, and he doesn't mind even becoming friends with the guy. However, Y Oying got into the conversation and said that actually, they were going to have lunch somewhere, but they don't have a car. It would be nice if this handsome guy helped them with this. Manager Hang Si got out of the car because he was happy to help. He walked around the car and opened the door for the couple, involuntarily staring at Y Oying. Then they all set off together. Y Oyan and Zhang Feng were sitting in the back seat. The girl was surprised that they had already gone so far. Then their temporary driver replied that there was nothing in the vicinity except one grocery store. The man then asked Zhang Feng where his car was. Living in this area without transport is quite inconvenient. And then Zhang Feng realized that this man was really right. He has so much money. Therefore, buying a car should not be a problem for him. So he told Mr. Nu to take them to a car dealership so he could look after something for himself. He decided to stop at Audi. And this, according to the manager, was an excellent choice. Why Oyan immediately said that having a car is very cool. And now he can pick her up from work. After a while, they all reached the salon. The manager warned the guy that if he decided to buy a house, he would have to contact him. And then he left and wished good luck with buying a car. When they went inside, there were magnificent cars all around. Why Oyan was delighted with such beautiful cars and even added that her father also has an Audi, so he should definitely buy one for himself. Then she asked which one he liked the most. Nearby, some guy looked at the blonde, but another man besieged him and told him to stop lumbar. He even poured his saliva all around. Meanwhile, Y asked if he liked the black car. It is simple, elegant, and exactly suits him. As a result, Zhang Feng called an employee to learn more about the car, and suddenly she and the man looked at each other. It turned out to be Lao Hu, while the others couldn't figure out how they knew each other. Zhang Feng awkwardly scratched his head and said that they were classmates, sort of. And why did he meet him again? In the 1990s, he was bullied everywhere because he was much smarter than his peers. So many years have passed since then. Now things are completely different. Lao Hu lit a cigarette and replied to his friend that they know each other. And he also said that Zhang Feng was a pain in one place in elementary school. This kid was his favorite punching bag. The man asked what brought him to his store. Maybe he's looking for a toilet. Zhang Feng replied that he wanted to know where such a price for a car came from. And he pointed his finger at the black Audi. The price is official, but will the guy have enough money for it? They don't make any discounts. Zhang Feng could not understand how they could sell cars for 410,000 if they cost no more than 390 on the website. Lao Hu threw the phone out of the guy's hands, which got into the soup, and asked what the price was now. Zhang ran and realized with annoyance that his phone was now broken. Lao Hu sarcastically said that the guy should know where and why he came. This place is not for beggars. Two million more, two million less, what difference does it make to him at all? Then he turned to Y Oyan, called her dear and said that this poor guy couldn't even afford an Audi. But he drives a red Lamborghini, and therefore she should set her priorities correctly. Also, that guy also got into the conversation with his strange questions. But it wasn't there. Y Oyan ordered them to stop talking nonsense, because everything suits her. She grabbed Zhang Feng's hand and said it was time for them to leave. Lao sat down and told them after them that all this was not very interesting, since the guy gave up so easily. Looking at the soup in which the phone was lying. Lao Hu realized with regret that it was spoiled. An hour and a half later, a suitcase with money landed on Lao Hu's desk, and Zhang Feng in a red shirt sat down impressively behind a chair. He asked maliciously, who here was saying that he had no money? Isn't that enough to buy a car? Lao Hu couldn't understand, was the guy just pretending before? And now he decided to intimidate them. The second guy kept lamenting that this Zhang Feng turned out to be just an incredibly rich man. And then Lao Hu changed and asked what kind of car he wanted to buy. He will be happy to help him make the right choice. After all, N knows his business and does not dare to deceive him in any case. But Zhang Feng just grinned and said he wasn't going to buy anything yet. He just came to show how rich he was and that they were all wrong. And now it's time for him and Y Oyan to go about their business. Slamming the suitcase with the money, they went outside, taking one last look in the direction of the salon. Then they found another one and the guy was surprised that the big brands looked pretty impressive. Going inside, they were met by two girls who were quite brightly dressed. They asked how they could help and if they had come for the car. Then he told them to show the cars, everything they have in the cabin. The girls began to clarify what kind of car he needed, for what purposes, characteristics, and so on. The girls surrounded him from all sides that Zhang Feng could not gather his thoughts. He barely uttered that he needed a car for his family. And then they showed him one particular model. The brunette had never heard of this brand before. The car looks quite expensive and very beautiful. Then one of the girls asked what he thought about the Bayanui X5. It has a comfortable interior and very good handling. Therefore, it is perfect for a young man. 
Moreover, now there is a discount on it, as well as he will receive insurance included and this is a special offer. Zhang Feng thought that the price was very big, but it was worth it. Thanking the girls, the brunette said that he would take this car, and later they both drove in a new car through the tunnel. They returned to Lao Hu's salon, where they had been earlier, and Wai Oyan did not quite understand what they needed here. Zhang Feng just grinned and replied that she would find out for herself now. Dar and his faithful dog noticed that the two had returned. Now they realized that they were on completely different levels. Slamming his neato friend, who does not know how to treat guests, Lao Hu asked the guy if Zhang Feng had already bought a car. Zhang raised his hand up and said that he needed to wash his new car, and apparently their salon could provide such services. Lao Hu didn't understand why to wash the car if it was brand new. Zhang asked if they were afraid that he wouldn't pay them. He will give a thousand dollars each, and that they should wash it very carefully. Getting nervous, Lao said that he would do everything, and the car would sparkle. And soon they got down to business. After a while, Zhang Feng said that their time was coming to an end and it was time for them to go home. And he told Lao that in the future, if his friends want to buy a car, then he should tell them about him. And the way is not worried. He will ask his rich friends to visit his salon. When the guests left, Lao Hu asked, who knew that after so many years Zhang Feng could be such a rich man? Someday, fate will have mercy on them too. It was already late in the evening. Zhang Feng and Wai Oyan had just returned home. They took the girl's things and brought a bunch of suitcases when she said she was too tired and would go to the bath. At this time, Zhang Feng was bringing in the last boxes of her things. He could barely drag them and could not understand what she had there, since it was all so heavy. While the blonde was taking a shower, Zhang Feng was lying on the sofa, having already drunk two bottles of the drink. He thought about the fact that now there is a house and a car. However, he should understand the strength of his ability as an appraiser in order to always have money. Meanwhile, the girl came out of the shower in one towel because she had forgotten her clothes in the room, so she shouted to him to bring her clothes from the suitcase. Opening the suitcase, he asked what she needed. After looking at the underwear, he took out what he needed, while being a little embarrassed, and then took it all to the girl. The phone rang, and somehow opening his eyes, Zhang Feng saw on the screen that Sayori was calling. Zhang Feng picked up a little and answered the call. The girl on the phone apologized for calling so late and asked if she was distracting him from his business. The guy was upset that his plans for the blonde were ruined, but he replied that she distracted him quite a bit. The girl had a rather sad voice, and therefore the young man said that he had just made a reservation and everything was fine. He then put on a t-shirt while Liu Xiaor offered to meet him tomorrow because she wanted to pay him back but didn't know where he lived. Zhang replied that tomorrow was a great option, but he didn't need to return the money at all, it was better to let her take care of her mother, and they would discuss the money later. Xiaor replied that she knows that he is a good person, but 600,000 is a very large sum, and it needs to be given. The guy is afraid that if he continues to talk in the same direction, he will lower Xiaor's self-esteem to the very bottom. But, as a result, he told her that he would visit his aunt tomorrow, after the operation, and hoped that she would not mind. But Xiaor replied that it was a good idea and she would wait for him in the morning at the entrance to the hospital. Zhang didn't understand why she was so eager to give him the money if her mother hadn't even started operating yet. The next morning came. Liu Maior was standing near the entrance to the hospital and waiting for the guy who still hadn't come yet. But the next moment, a white car stopped near her and Zhu Wai was looking out of the window. What a coincidence that they met here. The brunette asked her what she was doing here, to which the redhead replied that it was a hospital. Why can't she be here? Are you not smarter than that? Then there are problems. Liu Xiaor shook her head, saying there was no problem. There was a blonde man nearby who made sure that Zhu Wai had not lied, because her classmate was a real beauty. And then he said his name was Gao Tong. Xiaor just kept silent and didn't say anything. And this guy made his conclusions. She doesn't seem to be very talkative. Zhang Feng appeared out of nowhere and asked if their car was there. Who taught them to park it all? Like a macaque at the wheel. Zhu Wai was angry that he had reappeared. Who did he just call a monkey? But the guy didn't stay away. He stood in front of Liu Xiaor, blocking her with himself, and greeted her wryly, if I may say so. The girl put her hands on her hips and said that it was not visible at all that he was working here. Maybe he decided to pose as an alpha male again. Maybe he wants to play hero and save his girl. Zhang Feng replied that he lives in the garden of the future, it's too far away, and the bus doesn't go there, so it's hard to get to work without his car. Zhu Wai said it was all complete nonsense. He lives in a villa and doesn't have a car. Let her see what a handsome man her hubby has. He should also buy a car, because then his life will change dramatically. Zhang began to pretend to be a very cool guy and told Zhu Wai that her main problem was that she was too self-confident, and it all looks very stupid. And then the redhead couldn't believe that that cool car belonged to him. Now she also wants X5. Zhang approached the blonde and asked him to do something with his girlfriend already. 
Then the guy put his arm around Liu Xiaora's shoulders and was already heading towards the hospital, but then suddenly turned his head back and told Mr. Gao that he turns out to be quite rich, it deserves respect, someday he'll even ask him for advice. He also warned that Zhu Wai is especially dangerous when she is very angry. A few minutes later, Shang Feng and Liu Xiaora went to her mother's room. The guy introduced himself to the woman and she smiled warmly at him. Is this really the guy who lent money for her treatment? She is insanely grateful to him. The young man held her hand and replied that everything was fine, because that's what anyone would do. The guy had a strange feeling that this conversation was going in a completely different direction. He asked the woman not to worry about anything. He has some things to do and he will leave very soon. The woman asked her daughter to give the guy some fruit, otherwise she stands alone on the sidelines and does nothing. He should eat at least before leaving, and Zyor will peel his apple for him while they chat. The woman began to say that her daughter is a very good girl and has always been one. And therefore, from that moment on, she entrusts her daughter to him. The girl immediately turned in her direction and asked what she was saying. The guy also got a little nervous and was already starting to mumble something there about the fact that he and her daughter, in fact, are not together. The woman replied that she was already with one foot in the grave, so what was the point of lying to her? She has already passed the stage of denial. If she dies, who can her poor daughter rely on? Zhang Feng realized that the old lady was in a bad state. He suddenly hugged Liu Xiaor when told Auntie that she was not a miss at all. He wanted to talk to her about it, but Xiaor told him about her health problems. The guy was afraid that this news would overexcite her. Now she sees it and they will hide the truth from the woman. They love each other. The woman smiled with a calm smile and said that now her Xiaor is in safe hands. The girl, meanwhile, with tears in her eyes, reminded the guy that he had things to do and he should not be detained. He can eat on the go. Zhang Feng left the ward, said goodbye to the woman and wished her a speedy recovery. He would visit her in a couple more days. Going out into the corridor, the young man noticed that a heart was carved on the apple. Getting into the car, he realized that he had done such a good deed today and even got a wife. But then he wondered if it was good or bad. When the young man got into the car, he put an earpiece in his ear and asked the caller how things were going. At the other end of the phone, they said that Grandpa wanted to take a student. And the girl decided that he could perfectly fit this role. And therefore Bai Fuzu decided to call him and ask his opinion about it all. The guy asked, isn't her grandfather one of the most famous treasure collectors of Bai Lao? It can't be that he wants to accept him as his disciple. The girl began to say that it was only he himself who would be interested in doing all this. But then Zhang Feng abruptly agreed and said that he would be there very soon. Arrived at the house where he was expected, Zhang Feng checked out this old man's nice mansions. However, everything was quite gloomy, but his house was just huge. There was even a pond of its own. Bai Fusi came out to him and said that her grandfather was already waiting for him inside, so she went out to see him off. When they went inside, Zhang Feng almost fell over from the beauty that was inside. Paintings and calligraphy are stored here, the age of which has exceeded hundreds or even thousands of years. Of the total cost will be approximately 10 billion. To leave such a thing in the most visible place, the girl asked the brunette where he was looking. After all, this junk is worth nothing. The guy realized with annoyance that these people had already completely eaten up. After entering the room, Bai Fuzu invited him to sit down while she called Grandpa. But he can't touch anything here. Zhang Feng saw that the most ordinary furniture in the living room can be thousands of years old. If it breaks, it will be very, very bad. Although when he sat down on one of the chairs, he realized that it was very comfortable. Grandpa entered the room, who did not expect Zhang Feng to come so quickly. The young man greeted old man Bei, and he told him to sit down. He then asked Bai Fuzu to bring them tea. The guy said that he had heard that he was interested in making him his student. Zhang Feng became interested. However, the old man said that he had nothing to hurry for. He needed to drink delicious tea first. Picking up the mugs, the guy thought. Did the old man accept it or not? The tea smelled very nice and most likely it was Bai Lo Chun. The old man was surprised that this young man understood from the first sip of tea what kind of tea it was. It's not as simple as it seems. And therefore it is not at all surprising that Zhu has recommended him. Then the old man decided to check it out again. The guy should look very carefully at the tea set that stands in front of him and should tell which dynasty it belongs to. Zhang Feng thought that he would not be fooled so easily. Looking at the service, he saw the number 15 in the circle, 15 consumer goods. The old man also asked his granddaughter to look at this service. She said that by the patterns and traces on the edges of the cup, you can tell that this service belongs to the Song Dynasty, and the texture suggests that it may be from the Southern Song Dynasty. Most likely, it belongs to either Celadon Linquin or Zhu Yao Porcelain or it's Celadon Yeju at all. After listening to his granddaughter, old man Bai asked the guy what he thought about it. Zhang Feng awkwardly scratched his head and said that, of course, he might be wrong, but it seemed to him that it was just a fake. 
the usual imitation of antique products. In the background, Yuifuzu rolled her eyes and whispered that he was just shaming her. Meanwhile, the guy continued. All these patterns on green ceramics are made artificially. They are made professionally. At first glance, the service looks like the original, but in fact it's just a fake. Suddenly the old man laughed, they say. This is what the kid threw out. The guy thought, is it really the end for him? Had he made a mistake? And the old man said that he had a real talent in such matters. This service is really made at the present time. Both Bai Fuzu and Zhang Feng did not expect this. The guy couldn't believe that he had done everything right. And the girl couldn't believe that she had made a mistake. So big. Now she was very ashamed. Old man Bai said that this service is just a high quality imitation. Which was created with the help of ancient technologies. Naturally, it is very difficult to expose her. Then the old man got up and called the guy to follow him to show something. Zhang Feng wondered if the old man wanted to show him his collection. Then why did he bring him to his office? Old man Bai took a book from the shelf, but it turned out to be a secret passage. This surprised the brunette very much. Did he really get into some kind of movie? The man said that due to a special modification carried out with the help of an exclusively reinforced stone, this corridor will be able to withstand even an earthquake with a force of 8 points or higher. Zhang Feng thought that these walls must be worth a fortune. It turns out that there is a mechanical gate here. Grabbing the handles, the old man asked if the guy was ready to lose the power of speech from what he would see there now. When the man opened the doors, Zhang Feng just almost fainted. There was a real museum inside and the old man explained that he had been collecting all these valuables for decades and each item was very carefully selected by his own hand. Now he has to look and tell which dynasty one of the items is from. After carefully examining the thing in front of him, Zhang Feng said that it was 1920 years old. And this is a very good copy. This is a treasure that has survived the period of spring and autumn. The old man did not expect the young man to notice this stand at all. It turns out that he has excellent powers of observation. Then the guy picked up the horse and realized that this sensei had just a great painting. The old man praised him for that, too, but it was already obvious. Then Zhang Feng went to another object and said that this ten-sided figure is also from the period of spring and autumn. It should have a history of 2345 years. In general, there should be ten years on figures of this kind, but there are only nine of them here. If you look closely, you can see that the master deliberately made her earless. For such an analysis, old man Bai only allowed the guy and said that it was a great job. Zhang Feng then said that his treasury was by no means as simple as it actually seemed. There are really a lot of incredible objects in it. The old man stroked his beard and said that fortunately, he did not have any fakes in the collection yet. However, the guy did not agree with this. He pointed to one painting and said it was fake, just an imitation. Old man Bai couldn't believe it. How could he have made such a big mistake? He got this thing for himself when he was looking for valuables. Chen Lao loved her very much and called her his treasure. This is a painting by Zhang Zai himself, and no one on earth would be able to replicate his technique. Then the old man said that even though the guy is a role, but don't let him talk such nonsense. And then Zhang Feng said that he knew at least a little about antiques. This painting should be about 20 years old and if it was painted by Zhang Zai, it would be at least 100 years old. He can clearly see the signature on the picture himself. This is a mark of the university and it must be the work of one of the students. Having carefully looked at the picture, the old man said that the guy says that it was drawn by a student from the university. But this manuscript is absolutely authentic. The guy is definitely talented, but this is complete nonsense. The guy thought that the Mark 22 was definitely on this picture, so it might not be so strict. And that's what they decided. Zio Zhu specializes in ancient manuscripts, after all. So let her look and say what and how. The brunette also agreed with such a plan, since there was no other way to solve this problem. And he himself thought that this harmful old man flatly refuses to believe him. And before he realizes that this is a fake, he will listen to the opinions of dozens of people. After a couple of minutes, they returned to where Bai Fuzu was waiting for them and Grandpa told her that he and this guy had a discussion about a painting. And in order to solve it, she must look at it herself and say whether it is real or not. The girl began to study everything carefully. After a while, the girl announced her decision, this picture is really not the original. The man just exhaled heavily, leaned over to his granddaughter and said that she shouldn't say that, because the authenticity of his treasures is very important to him, and his entire collection is his life's work. The blonde asked him to look at the picture more closely. The work of the master here is clear and natural and this picture repeats it too well. Only one hitch here shows the lack of skills of the artist. And in another place too. If you look at this picture from a distance, it really does not differ from the original. But in fact, it must have been written and really only by a student. Even Zhang Feng understood what was going on here. Old man Bai laughed. It must be a very high quality copy. 
Then he said that his granddaughter and this guy are really very talented, and of course they will become the leading figures of the world of antiques. But then Zhang Feng put in his word. He told Bai Lao that actually, there was more to it. He has a few more just high quality things. It's over, Grandpa didn't want to hear it, but he had nothing left but to ask the guy to show how many more fakes he has in his collection. Zhang Feng ran. Bai Fu tried to stop him, and even called him a fool, but Grandpa told her not to stop him. She had to bring him Corvalol urgently before it was too late. After a while, the guy checked and brought all the things that were not real. And now a man can be really proud of him, because he has done an incredible job, and it was a piece of cake. However, he was immediately shut up by Bai Fuzu and told that he was a real idiot. Then she went back to her grandfather and asked if he was okay, and poured the medicine into him. Bai Lao replied that he was already much better and would be back to normal very soon. After a few minutes, they were already sitting quietly and old man Bai told the guy that it was really a great luck that he was with him. Knowing that the future of appraisers will lie in his hands, the old man is calm. Zhang Feng laughed and said he was just poking at random. It just seemed to him that all these objects were fake, that's all. But he didn't think that the man would really feel so bad. However, the man said that with all his incredible, great talent, he would not be able to become his disciple. 